So far we have learned the graphical velocity analysis of four bar loops using relative velocities. Of course, we also did more than four bars like six bars or eight bars, but the essential technique remained triangulation. We located velocity image of a point as an intersection of its relative velocities with respect to two other points. For example, in this four bar, with one link fixed, we got the velocity diagram as a triangle. And the essential nature of this diagram remains the same, even if we change the configuration of the mechanism. The triangle deforms but remains a triangle. But what if we don't have a four bar to start with? In that case, we'll have to think of something else. Here is an example. We have been given this six bar mechanism over here and the input is omega 2, the angular velocity of link number 2 over here. You would notice that link 2 is a part of this 1, 2, 3, 4 and the fixed link 5 bar loop or even if we try something else like this 1, 2, 3, 4 and again the fixed link 5 bar loop. Uh, we cannot escape starting with a 5 bar loop and therefore this problem cannot be solved using our usual technique. Fortunately, if we investigate the degrees of freedom of this mechanism, we would realize that it has 6 links and 7 pin joints. So in all, it has 1 degree of freedom. And what does that mean? It means we can select only one physical quantity say one angle that will decide all the other angles say one velocity that will decide all other velocities and the relation between these velocities will remain unique so if we double this input velocity then all other velocities will get doubled if we reverse this input velocity it will reverse all other velocities in the mechanism this unique or almost rigid relationship between velocities gives us the freedom to ignore this input which is very inconvenient this is not helping us to solve the problem and choose something else like this say one two three and the fixed link four bar loop and give a convenient input to it like assuming some convenient velocity angular velocity for this link omega six then the problem becomes solvable. We can find all the angular velocities. Of course, we are not solving the given problem. Although we are taking the same mechanism and the same configuration, we are assuming a different state. Maybe it is moving faster or slower or in the reverse direction. But that doesn't matter. We can always compare the omega 2 that we will get now with the original omega 2 that was given to us and scale accordingly. If we get it twice, we know our mechanism is moving two times faster. So reduce everything by half. Or if it is going in the reverse direction, reduce, uh, change the direction of all other velocities. We will get a velocity diagram as usual, assuming this arbitrary omega 6 that we have assumed say something like one radian per second in a clockwise direction or something. Uh, only later on we need to scale this diagram. So read it to a different scale. This scale could be more than one or less than one if our omega 2 turns out to be faster or slower than what was given. And mind you it could be a negative number also if the direction of omega 2 comes out to be opposite to that of the given direction. This category of problems which become solvable after reselection of the input link is called the low degree of complexity problem and the technique that we just used for solving it is called the inverse crank method.